Hello, my name is Udo Neumann. Uh, today I want to give you a brief overview of how we put those uh, Boulder World Cup reports together that you might have seen on YouTube. My main objective for being at these competitions is to coach my athletes. So any camera that we, we, uh, we took or any uh, plans we made had this objective in, in the foreground. So we, we couldn't uh, take an elaborate uh, camera rig or anything complicated, a fancy or a camera crane. That was out of, the, uh, out of question. We had to uh, only film our athletes with very simple cameras for later analysis of their movements and for, for tactical behavior. So we do this anyhow. And it came out that these simple flip cameras are really good for filming bouldering comps. Normally for, for normal use, especially for bouldering, they really have the disadvantage that they don't have a real wide angle. And you can't zoom them anyhow. You, there is no op optical zoom on those simple cameras. They have an angle of about a 50 millimeter uh, lens, and this works out really perfectly for bordering comps. The other advantage of these cameras, or if you're shopping for, for a camera like this, they're really cheap depending on, on if you buy a last year's model or a, a recent model, up-to-date model. The most important thing or the biggest advantage of those cameras for the um, bouldering clips was that they do 60 frames per second. And this allows for really nice slow motion uh, that you don't have to render in the computer, but they're already there. I come back to this later when I talk about software. This is the Kodak ZX1. I got those cameras last early last year, early 2010. Um, I don't know if there's a, there might be a better model, but they worked really nicely. The, the image quality is okay, as many of those recent cheap cameras. The, cam the quality is okay. It's really not great at all, but they work. Uh, especially this model works fairly well under low light, but it's also a, a, an issue you have to think of when filming bordering comp. So we, I, I took two of those Kodak ZX1s and I handed those out to the athletes that were not longer in the, at the comp. Sometimes we put them on, on uh, Manfrotto video monopods, sometimes we were holding them handheld when we were standing in the crowd. And there's basically there's just a switch to turn them on and uh, provided that you have them in 60 frames HD 720p mode, they are more improved. Nothing can go wrong. You know, there's fixed focus, totally easy to operate. Okay, there's, uh, this is <laughs> the heart and soul of those clips. This is the uh, GoPro HD Hero something. This is the, the latest model. Uh, their biggest advantage is that they have a really nice fish eye. You know, they're also meant to be used in a, in a variety of reasons. For example, you can wear them as a little bit ridiculous looking headband, you know, like, a, like a head cam, that, uh, uh, especially if you're wearing glasses, uh, that makes you look really smart. Um, but uh, I, I actually, I use this headband really often to, to tie it around some poles or, or, or something. And in, uh, in Vail I started to use them. I already did some uh, nice shots in Vail, like the, uh, Daniel Woods, the, the male winner Daniel Woods, uh, uh, almost climbing the last problem. So these were really nice shots. But the first time I really uh, uh, used them nicely was in, in Sheffield. When rootsetter Jacques Godov told me where the cameras had to uh, uh, or should be, where he, as a rootsetter, would recommend to put the cameras, and this allowed for a really nice uh, shot, as you can see here. The, the big disadvantage of those cameras is that they don't have an LCD. To you never quite know what you're filming. 
we had a hard time figuring out what actually uh, the angle of view of those cameras is. And it's, it's fairly simple. You take the middle of this camera and basically the angle of view goes like this from the, from the center. So it was still a little bit uh, hit and miss uh, thing to adjust those cameras. No? They're super nice if they work. But they're uh, not 100% reliable, you never quite know how long the battery is going to last. And finally, uh, the last uh, 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 camera I took, I'm, I, I was mostly uh, carrying this, is the uh, Nikon D5000. I got this in uh, uh, 2009. Uh, because it has a feature set that is still unique in, in all of the DSLRs. It has a flip screen, but it's absolutely mandatory if you want to film, uh, uh, if you want to shoot video. The, it's still the only Nikon camera that has a, a flip screen. I, a, in my opinion, every video DSLR should have a flip screen. Uh, it makes it so much more convenient and uh, sometimes you cannot even it makes it the only way to shoot video on those uh, cameras. I built myself a nice Steadicam, super cheap Steadicam. Uh, just put some Velcros around, but this is a different story. This camera was mostly, again, on the Manfrotto uh, video monopod. Uh, it has an interval mode and it shoots video. So that was a feature set that was unique in 2009 and still in 2010. So that's uh, my, my bread, it was my bread and butter camera. It's also fairly lightweight compared to the more professional models. And uh, mostly I used the uh, uh, 18 to 200 zoom lens. Uh, and uh, sometimes I was uh, carrying a fisheye. Originally I got this camera for uh, kite aerial photography for, for the interval mode because it's, it's uh, uh, lightweight as far as DSLRs go. As you can see on those clips, it worked okay. The main problem with those clips is that uh, sometimes we were standing in the crowd, so it was really, uh, it was impossible to hold the camera still. That was a problem. Uh, sometimes we switched the, the mode accidentally on those, uh, on those Kodak cameras. This happened, but apart from this, uh, for, uh, it was all in a small backpack and for very little effort and very uh, not very expensive investment I think we pulled off some nice clips with this equipment. I want to thank all the root setters at the various comms for giving me an idea where to place the cameras. Especially Jackie Godov in Sheffield had a very clear understanding of where the most spectacular position for this camera is and as you can see it worked out, out nicely. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for uh, 2011's Bouldering World Cup reports that we hopefully will do.